the rumors are true. I am reporting live from a depressive episode. It's a rerun. I have seen it before. I'm just kind of looking forward to some commercial breaks. (laughs) I thought it would be the perfect time to talk about, one, the difference between sadness and depression. Two, how I prevent slipping from sadness into depression. And three, what happens when that ice gets too slippery and I just fall on my butt right into the depression river? (laughs) Which is where I am right now. Actually, to be quite frank, where I am right now is, is physically my bed. I am recording live from my bed. It just felt safer than my desk, which is about, what, I was going to say 10 feet away, but there's absolutely no way it's that far away. 10 inches. I don't know. I didn't do that great in math class. It's just, it's over there. You can just trust me on that. My um, portable setup is not portable. I'll tell you. Uh, I realized that somewhere in my move and my decluttering or whatever I did, uh, I got rid of all my microphone covers, of which I bought in like a depressive spiral, I don't know, right at the beginning of the pandemic, um, so that I would have different color options. So I had uh, like any color from pink to orange, from pink to orange. (laughs) From pink to to whatever the opposite of pink is. Um, But they're all gone now. So instead, I'm using this sock. And I think it's going pretty well, considering that it usually is on my foot. Don't worry, it is fresh from the laundry. Covered in cat hair, but (laughs) smells... Actually, yeah, smells nice. Smells like fresh laundry. Oh my gosh, am I an adult... I have fresh smelling socks. Incredible. Incredible. (laughs) All right. So the difference between sadness and depression. It's a good question. It's a good, it's, it's a really good question. Let me tell you, let me give you a a little bit of a play-by-play of what happened over the last few days and we can walk through it together and maybe we'll discover some of the differences between sadness and depression together. So today is Thursday and a few days ago over the weekend, I went to a very big event. It was a convention I was there at a booth selling my wares, saying hi to people. It was extremely overwhelming in all of the ways you would expect, as in like seeing so many people, um, putting out a lot of energy, taking in a lot of energy, but wow, wow, wow. I mean, it was also all the best things. Um, I got to hear people's stories and people told me about what they're doing to prevent the sadness avalanche, like yoga and like different video games that calm them and Dungeons and Dragons. And I live for that. It is like my absolute greatest honor on this planet to hear (laughs) your stories. Um, so the event was three days. The, the first day was so overwhelming that I actually got a migraine and went to bed really early. So I guess my body was kind of like, wait, what? Like I kept feeling like my soul was in it. Like my soul was very excited to be there. 
but my brain and my body were kind of panicking a little bit. It didn't feel like it should be allowed that all these people were together. And uh, just for the record, I liked how the convention like made sure that they had every safety precaution in place. You had to show your vaccine card to even be able to get in. Yada, yada, yada. The point is that I was there and there were also people there and we were there together and there was interaction that I did. So by the end of those three days, I actually was flying pretty high. I think I was feeling excited. It was so wonderful. Oh my gosh, like beyond comprehension to see people come up to the table and look at my artwork with their eyeballs in front of me because I've been selling it online since, you know, for over a year now. Um, But I've never gotten to see people react to it in real time. So that was just lit me up inside. Just so excited. I can't wait to make more things. Um, And also, I was proud of myself for talking to people. I was excited that I memorized some people's names. And some people remembered my name. Like, that's so... What? Like, that's that's pretty big, right? And it's something I haven't had to do in a while. Because of this little thing called pandemic, like, whatever. So then I came home. And I was so tired. I was very tired. And I ended up taking a day just to rest. I was, I had all this work I was planning to do. And when I really plotted it out and was like, how much of this do I actually have to prioritize in terms of urgency? It came up that pretty much none of it was as important as I was telling myself that it was. That is actually a huge helpful tip that I learned in occupational therapy, which I can definitely talk about in another episode if you want, um, is avoiding that feeling of like, oh my gosh, I'm behind. I am the worst. I am like, because I didn't accomplish this one thing on my to-do list, I am the worst person of all time and I will never find success or love again. I deserve nothing. Which I've never felt (laughs) because I... (laughs) I'm very put together, but um, just in case any of you have know someone who's felt that way. So, um, yeah, rested. And then was like, you know, I'm very tired and I am coming off of this huge high. So there's a really good chance that I'm going to lose lose control a little bit and potentially get really sad. Um, especially I did, I actually was very aware of this also during the convention. I should, I should mention, (laughs) it was during the convention, I should mention that a couple of times I would just get hit by sadness really hard and it was so fleeting. So it kind of didn't, it rattled me for sure, but it didn't like affect my entire day. Like, This is so silly, but I walked out of the building and kind of, it was really crowded outside and there are a lot of people yelling, like they want you to buy passes to the convention from them or they just have a lot to say. And somebody yelled at me, hey, I want you to be my girlfriend. And for some reason, that just broke my heart right there because I don't want to belong to anybody, I guess. I don't want anyone to think that they can have me at all. Apparently is what I learned on the way to get my pumpkin spice cold brew bullshit. And then I bounced back. But knowing that that sadness was available in my body uh, made me worried that there'd be a time where I couldn't bounce back. So 
I prepared. I decided to do um, a little extra like self-care. Man, that word gets thrown around so much. I'm going to call it self-care for the like, I don't know, to help this really well told story that is extremely linear and has had no weird uh, deviations whatsoever. So I planned to go on a hike outside. Uh, I planned to go to the store and get food, which always makes me really happy. I planned on taking a bath. I love a bath. Um, I... Ooh, I decided that I would read before bed instead of scrolling on my phone. And what else? I made sure to have a lot of water. And I I did those things for a few days. And I actually thought it was working pretty well. (laughs) So um, I was kind of surprised when... After, I mean, a a pretty normal day for me, uh, that when I laid down, all of a sudden it was like all the sadness that maybe I'd been, I don't know, avoiding or maybe was just building up and I hadn't noticed it or maybe is just um, part of the process of my healing it all just rushed to my head really fast and um that's the the end of my story (laughs) and where I can begin this uh comparison between sadness and depression so the sadness the sadness that hit me in that moment it was like 11 o'clock at night I started crying a lot. It was very like heavy in my chest. My throat hurt. That's very normal when I'm having negative emotions. And I want to say there's some kind of like metaphor about how it's because I have a problem communicating when I'm upset or what I'm upset about. And I think I need to work on that. But um, that's for my future therapist to worry about. (laughs) It's all up to my future therapist. (laughs) 